this is the end now of TNT Tuesdays. It's been quite a journey and we all had a lot of fun, but it's not quite over yet. There is one more video to go. And what am I talking about? Well, at the beginning of the series I just offhandedly started throwing out thumbs up or thumbs down for the maps, and it developed into something of a series staple, generating a lot of really cool discussion in the comments. But as the series went on, I began to grow more and more frustrated with the fact that I was only allowing myself a thumbs up or a thumbs down. And I feel like these maps deserve just a little bit better than that. And that's where this video comes in. In this video, I'm going to go through each of the 32 maps in TNT, give another short but more focused review, and give it a slightly more in-depth rating. Instead of just thumbs up or thumbs down, now there's going to be two thumbs up, one thumb up, a thumb to the side for neutral, a thumb down, and then two thumbs down for the actual genuine stinkers. The marks I hand out in this video are mostly based on one thing. Is the map still worth a play today? Of course, this is informed by some important sub-criteria, such as visuals, atmosphere and gameplay, but at the end of the day I kind of just went with my gut. The main differences between these marks and the original marks are having more time to reflect, absorbing some of your opinions, and simply having a larger rating scale. Just before we get into it, you can pause the video here to see all the ratings I gave during the original TNT Tuesdays run. Let's get into it. So it begins. Grab a Berserk and go nuts! This map may not have been the first to ever use that mechanic, but it probably did the most to popularise it. The map's layout is intuitive, explorable, interesting, easy to run through quickly. The detailing is quite nice, and even calls back to Doom 1 and 2 in places without seeming cheesy. The map finds that fine balance between easygoing and attention grabbing, which is excellent for a map 1. And if not for the nostalgia and historical impact of map 1 in Doom 1 and 2, this could be in contention for the best iWatt opener. The music's cool, two thumbs up. So how do you follow up that excellent tech-based style opener while managing to set the tone for how most of the rest of the WAD will actually look and play? Well, John Wakelin and whoever decided the map order did about as good a job as you could hope. Starting the map in the eponymous human barbecue is a striking sight. In fact, it seems to have inspired the Doom community when they named the loud rocking music track Smells Like a Burning Corpse. This map bleeds with atmosphere, and that appears to have been Team TNT's design philosophy for evolution as a whole. The marble temple look in this map is actually fairly unique. The difficulty also ramps up markedly from map 1, especially if you go for the secret with the super shotgun. The outside area looks cool, and the fights are pretty engaging. The only major downsides are that this jump is pretty janky, and a lot of backtracking can be necessary if you want to tag every secret. This map easily retains its single thumbs up. I used to love power control as a kid, and the Doom 2 track Message for the Art File actually works pretty well here. The intro area where you're creeping through like a tech wall facility and it springs traps on you is pretty cool, and then the big outside area. It makes an impression at a glance, looking pretty cool and seeming kind of fun, but the more you run through its confusing, symmetrical layout, it starts to get a bit cold. Some of the secrets are just bullshit. The teleporter puzzle is annoying, and other sections of the map just have boring fights. This art file room can be interesting, but it can also just be neutered by finding the secret. I gave this map a thumbs up based on nostalgia, but re-reviewing it now? I can't justify that anymore. This is a thumbs down. R.I.P. Ty Halderman Wormhole is a concept map, and you barely have to play it if you don't want to. Seriously, the exit is right there. And as a kid, I used to just leave. Why would I want to go through all these dark claustrophobic tunnels? Well, if I'm brutally honest, there really isn't much reason to. The fights are okay, taking on the art file on the stairs can be quite thrilling, but the secret narrow hallway room with the imps, hell knights and lost souls is annoying. And then you have to do it twice. The wormhole itself is an interesting idea, seeing the map twice but detailed a little bit differently does set the imagination off, but the gameplay is just undeniably a little bland. There's not really a payoff for exploring the wormhole. On the strength of the concept and the music, this map just retains its thumbs up. I like the way this map starts, and I like the music. 
The narrow halls are made to work with the puzzles and the monster placement. The big dark outside area is cool because you can choose how you want to engage with it. And then the dungeon area has this fun little fight. The unofficial super secret shotgun room has another simple but cool puzzle. This map overall just has a nice combination of atmosphere and gameplay. Nothing particularly special, but I like it. It's an easy thumbs up. This is the map where the semi-blind playthroughs started, and I think even the rating system started to become a baked-in feature. I've always been taken by the big generator room. This visual is particularly memorable to me. The visuals overall are pretty simple, but they do just manage to convey this nice sense of place. In fact, the whole map has that feel to it. The combat is a little bit tense at times, but once again, mostly pretty simple. The exception being the thrilling cacodemon fight under the generators. Holding the map back is a lot of strangely designed backtracking. The music fits pretty well, and the archfile at the end is a nice shot across the bow, and well, you can turn the generators on if you want, so it's an easy thumbs up. I love the music, and I love the opening room. This map is another one that has a really cool sense of place. However, after you get outside and you've neutered the initial ambush, things do just get kind of boring. This brick hallway area has an obvious trap that is sort of fun, and the end area is, well, fine. But the prison itself is total bullshit unless you go in there with the invuln, and then even then it's just a chore. The nostalgia for me is strong in this map, but I'm finding myself having an internal crisis because the quality of the gameplay is pretty damn spotty. At the end of the day, prison just retains a thumbs up, based mostly off the fact that the things I don't like, I can describe as fine rather than bad. And here we have the first thumbs down of my original run. Metal is notorious for its huge rooms full of hit scanners and its weird progression. And well, when the crowd is right, it's right. I actually don't mind the all metal theming, and the intro area is sort of okay, but the massive hit scanner rooms are annoying. The progression also involves finding a mandatory secret, which to me is very lazy map design. You know it's a better way to have non-combat map progression? Puzzles. Or even just locked doors that need a key. I respect some of the ideas this map is going for, and the final room isn't anywhere near as bad as some say, because once you come back to it with a modern skill set, it does really sort of neuter the bullshit combat. But for me, this map just retains its thumbs down. Between here and map 14 is the best run of maps in TNT. This is an excellent reprise of map 1, and it has the most monsters of any iWOD map, and possibly the best map in TNT gameplay-wise. The comments were warning me for weeks about how hard this map is, and I laughed those concerns off. In fact, I quietly played this map with fast monsters enabled, and I don't think anyone even noticed or commented on it. Hard. My. Ass. Nightmare difficulty aside, this map is just fun little romp through a tech base with over 300 hit scanners and imps, and one pinky. The tech base has nice detailing, good map flow, and the gameplay design is way ahead of its time. I suspect this was a highly influential map, and it's an easy two thumbs up. A quietly competent Thomas Dane tech base. There's nothing really special going on here, but this map is kind of a good way to smash through a quick three minutes of doom. The teleport fight here and the outside area are kind of fun, and I like the detailing in these hallways. For me, this map easily just retains its thumb up. It doesn't really do enough to be considered for a double, but to be fair, I don't think Tom was going for anything spectacular here anyway. This map has a great sense of place, and actually manages to tell a little story. The guard towers, and then the pentagram, the bloodied storage facility itself, cool stuff. One half is light and the other half is dark. The demons flood in through a bunch of teleporters, and there are quite a few heavy enemies scattered around the place. It's a crate maze, but with a good dose of verticality to make efficient use of the space. It all has so much promise to be cooler than it is though. Unfortunately, the monster placement lets it down. Basically, there should have been a lot more monster teleporter points. Still, I don't know if that's a big enough flaw to knock it all the way down, and so it just hangs on to a thumbs up. I love this map, and I know that makes me weird. I don't know if this map is typically hated, but I think most people just don't really feel anything about this map. It's commonly cited as a prime example of TNT's classic problem of having large spaces with no monsters. And that's true, but in this map not only does it work, I think it makes for an incredible atmosphere. This map sets my imagination off like crazy. It's the first introduction to TNT's amazing starry space sky, and it's the perfect map for it. The intro area does a great job of rebuking a futuristic but realistic space base. 
The more you explore, you find the grittier, less grandiose realities of being far from home. And as you do it, it becomes obvious the hell is slowly but inevitably arriving. There are so many different areas, the storage, the lab, the sky deck, the sewer, the slimy cavern, the maze, but they all feel effortlessly part of one big hole. The crater itself is meant to be tense and awe-inspiring, and that's only lost on us nowadays because fighting a single revenant has been made a joke by decades of skill floor lifting. I desperately want to give this map two thumbs up, and I know it's just due solely to personal nostalgia. But you know what? Fuck it. Two thumbs up. This map is the actually good version of what Crater was trying to do. Great overall visuals, great mix of outdoor and indoor, including many coherent but varied locations, good memorable set pieces, and unlike Crater, undeniably good combat and monster placement. We finally tackle a cyber demon and it's a really cool reveal. Also the combat from some areas can spill into others and being forced to revisit some earlier areas of the map is actually done very naturally. It's probably between this and map 9 for just the best map in TNT. Two thumbs up. TNT is on a roll. This map is quietly one of its best. You start in an intriguing outside storage area, but you can see your goal immediately. The red key will open the exit behind you, but to get there you need to go on an adventure through the steelworks. But they have been overrun by demons. The machines now spill blood instead of molten steel. The machinery itself is actually just as dangerous as the demons, but with care and smarts you can make it through. Through the other side of the same window you saw your prize, you see your potential demise. The large crate opens revealing a spider demon awaiting you. As you crawl back through all the machinery, spilling over with demons anew, you dread the showdown. The wooden crates make for a wild west style shootout, and after your victory, all you do is go back to the teleporter behind where you started. Was it all worth it in the end? Two thumbs up. It all comes crashing to a halt here. The aptly titled Dead Zone is boring and frustrating. There's monsters that don't wake up, and some of the secrets are incredibly cryptic. I really get the feeling this was originally a deathmatch level that was been converted to single player, but unfortunately, badly so. In the first few seconds the combat's okay, because the outpost is crawling with demons, but after you've killed a few of them, suddenly it's just a long boring secret hunt, with the small exception of an archfile trap. This map has actually gone up in my esteem a little since I first played it, and the visuals are kinda cool in some places, but it's still a thumbs down. Possibly the spiritual grandfather of the Doom community's litany of Egyptian themed maps. This is Dario Kasali not at his best. There are some bizarre choices in map progression and overall design. There's no denying that ancient Egypt makes for a very cool theme, and so again, atmosphere. But the yellow key famously had to be patched in, and the final hit scanner trap is often broken depending on your source board or comp level. This feels like an early Dario map where he's still learning his craft. Fortunately, he got better. On visuals alone, this map sneaks its way into a thumbs up. I guess this is as close to a rum-soaked portside Caribbean pirate den as the Doom engine could do with mid-90s mapping craft, but the map itself is one of TNT's toughest with some nasty traps. I like the mix of wide open watery fights and cramped sewer trap filled fights, and the final fight is about as spectacular as TNT ever gets combat-wise. The hidden archvile and the incredibly fast-paced door puzzle though are early signs of Dario's mean design philosophy. Although it's a slight letdown atmosphere-wise, the combat makes this a fine enough map, so thumbs up. The first major introduction to an awful theme TNT continues to revisit. Cramped Caves. Deepest Reaches at least mixes it up a bit by having a variety of cramped caves, with hell and sorcery and caverns all featuring. There's a few bigger rooms to alleviate the claustrophobia, and verticality is used pretty well to make some of the fights fairly interesting. I think I was too harsh on this map with my original thumbs down, albeit I really wanted to just give it a thumbs to the side, so I will do that now. It still has bizarre map progression that to me at least feels like a chore. Tom Mustaine tech base again, but this time with a grand mana theme. The start is quietly a little dangerous with some distant chain gunners. Archviles are placed in some pretty wicked spots too. If you miss the invuln here, the ambush at the end can get pretty out of hand. We know what Tom has to offer by now. Decent visuals, decent understanding of map flow, and decent combat. Nothing stands out here as being spectacular, but it's fun enough classic Doom. Thumbs up. Dario Casali and Ty Haldeman team up here. 
and neither of them can save each other. This map is unnecessarily huge. The intense height difference makes fighting the Arachnatrons here a chore, the Archvile trap here is brutal, and the source of my only death in all of TNT Tuesdays. The blue area has too many barons, and the hidden but required shootable switch is BS. The final fight flatters to deceive. Just run around a bit and it's all over. Also, this Megasphere secret here is probably the most bullshit secret in all of the iWords. Some of the visuals are cool in places, but overall, thumbs down. Doomcute, the map. Ty Haldeman gets the immediate chance to redeem himself, and he pretty much does. The sense of place on this map caught me by surprise. Everyone remembers the truck, but it is only one of the several cool little moments of realism. This has some of the only modern adjacent Doom Cute in any of the iWord maps, and for that alone, I like it a lot. The combat is mostly pretty tame, but it does its job and doesn't really get in the way of ogling at the Doom Cute. There's an archfile at one point. A thumbs up. Let me introduce you to Drake O'Brien. Drake likes big maps which take the player on a journey through a variety of locations and provide a sense of adventure. It feels like Drake never threw away an idea. Whether it was an idea for an area or a combat piece, he would build it and include it in a map. The problem is that some of his ideas worked and others did not. Central Processing is a collection of ideas that work mostly okay visually, but not very well combat wise. Also get ready to see some questionable custom textures. I can't bring myself to enjoy this map. Thumbs down. Drake O'Brien 2 Electric Boogaloo Everything I said about the previous map applies here again, except the combat design is actually much better. Even though I say he never throws away an idea, even the bad ones, these maps undeniably do feel like you've been on a big adventure, and then the payoff in this map with the Cyberdemon fight in the shadows of this giant green hell temple is actually pretty spectacular. Unraveling each corner of the giant administration center is actually fairly interesting as well. It's a chaotic mapping style that needs a lot of things to come together to work, but here, it just about does. Thumbs up. Okay, so where the actual genuine stink is at, the prevailing wisdom would say, right here. And there's no two ways about it. This map has no alibi. It is ugly. Most of the combat is pretty poorly designed too. Long corridors of lower tier enemies or huge rooms full of higher tier enemies. A couple of the traps are thrilling on a blind playthrough, but only because an archfile is just sort of suddenly shoved in your face. The big fake wall ambush deserves special mention for being poor design. Also, anything remotely tough or interesting can just be nullified with a BFG or an invong. I don't think this map is as downright terrible as conventional wisdom would say. Some small bits of detailing are kinda cool. However, if any map in TNT deserves two thumbs down, it's this one. I might use a kind of tone of voice than the conventional wisdom, but I agree with the sentiment. I used to love this map as a kid, and I'm not really sure why. After a decently thrilling archfile fight at the very beginning, I notice that the visuals start to get boring, the combat gets boring, and the map is short and forgettable. For Crater, I couldn't resist pandering to my nostalgia, but for this map, I can. Thumbs to the side. Oh, but look, a rare moment of using the skybox as a texture, this is actually kind of cool. I'm convinced that this started out life as a deathmatch map, and then the way it was turned into single player, adding a bunch of narrow little caverns, wow, yay, exactly what the Doom engine excels at. This map is also bizarrely short and easy for the 24 slot, like, bizarrely short and easy, and yet you're given every gun minus the BFG. Oh yeah, because it's a deathmatch map. The more I think about this map, the more my disdain for it grows. The competence of the visuals should save it a bit, I mean there's no doubt this hell cavern was influential in its design, but I desperately want to give it two thumbs down. And so I am. In the same way that the run from 9 to 14 was a run of gems, 22 to 25 is a run of turds. Baron's Den refuses to let up on the narrow windy passages, although this time they are interspersed by several larger set pieces. I feel like David Hill has some cool ideas for combat set pieces, and his execution almost does them justice. A couple of traps are total BS though, and the narrow passages break up the action too much. The visuals are also some of the crudest outside of Habitat. I must admit, it's not as frustrating to play as you might think though. With better visuals or less narrow passages, this could have got a thumbs to the side, but they're there and so it is a thumbs down still. 
Alright, fucking hell, more windy little cave passages, and they're dark now, and the map actually plays pretty... well? Wait, what? Yeah, strangely this map is fine. There are some nice visual touches, and the combat design actually cleverly uses the darkness and the crampness. The outside ambush is actually even a bit fairer than you might think. The navigation can be a little bit confusing at times though, and if you just hate narrow caves, well, this doesn't offer too much more than that. As you can clearly tell, I do hate cramped little passages, but this map makes me like it anyway, and so for that alone, it deserves to retain its thumbs up. Drake is back! This adventure map has been made famous by a certain Doomtuber who does reviews where he grades wards map by map, or something like that. Anyway, Mount Pain has a reputation for being total BS with a lot of unfair combat. I personally was wary of all the long sewer running and damaging floor. In my now considered view, neither of those concerns are justified. The combat is fine, in fact some of the traps get the blood pumping in a really good way, and the long sewer section has plenty of rad suits. Although, it also has plenty of those terrible custom textures. The fight in the disaster area would be pretty intense if you were forced to stay in the room, although there's an involve anyway. The lead up to the outside area is probably the best part of the map combat wise, but the outside area itself is kind of boring, except for the vista of the eponymous Mount Pain. It's an undeniably cool visual touch. The very final area is a memorable and worthy send off to the map. Once again, the whole thing has a good sense of adventure, and arguably the greatest coalescence of Drake's ideas out of his three maps. This is a thumbs up. This is a Plutonia map, in TNT. It feels like Milo Casali was told by the rest of Team TNT, fine, you can have all your damn revenant traps, but you need to give the player a lot of ammo and health to compensate. And Milo reluctantly agreed but then made the co-op monster placement absolute batshit insane to get his own back. Anyway, Heck does have some cool little homages to Sandy's abstract kind of hell from the Doom 2 maps. The gameplay is plutonic fun. However, nothing about this map is particularly interesting gameplay or visual wise, it's just very competent. So thumbs up. My playthrough of this turned into a journey that the ancient Greeks might have enjoyed writing about. This map clearly wasn't designed to be friendly to completionists on a pistol start. However, apart from that, this is a pretty good looking map with some interesting set pieces, both in terms of location and fights. No matter what, it provides a fittingly epic journey for a map 29, and it was only a couple of boxes of shells, or even a berserk away from being a thumbs up on my semi-blind run. Upon reflection, the map's visuals and combat design deserve a better rating, and the challenge of figuring out how to do it easier on a 100% run with the ammo that you get is actually kind of fun. The map is getting an upgrade to a thumbs up, but with a strong warning. Pistol starting this map is an experience unlike any other in any of the iWords. As far as Team TNT were concerned, the last map is simply a great chance to tell one last story. This is the only one of the three iWord Icon of Sin maps to involve significantly more than the monster spawner fight. The torch puzzle is iconic, and actually pretty clever. The Grand Rooms have some relatively tough fights and they build the tension pretty well. Special shout out to the Sky Cages in the Marble Hall. The final arena is actually a pretty cool design for an Icon of Sin fight, being relatively cramped and involving one last puzzle. The idea is to be quick or you'll be overwhelmed. It's a different take on the fight compared to what Doom 2 and Plutonia did, and I guess that sums TNT up. You have to respect the fact that Team TNT went out of their way to try and be different. Evolution seems to be a way to try and use the Doom engine to tell stories. To do different things with Doom's visuals and combat design for the sake of expanding people's minds and keeping Doom fresh. I honestly believe that TNT was a key influence on the growth and longevity of Doom's custom mapping scene. While TNT itself often fumbled the execution, its premises, atmosphere and good maps proved that Doom could offer more. In his recent appearance on Lex Fridman's podcast, John Carmack made a tongue-in-cheek comment about Doom being Turing complete in a design sense. It hits the sweet spot between easy to learn how to map, yet being a very powerful way of creating worlds. Out of all the iWords, TNT is the best proof of this. Map 30 retains its single thumbs up, and my mark for the whole of TNT is also a single thumbs up. It is held back by a lot of mediocre combat design, However, 
playing TNT these days is less about the gameplay and more about the experience of seeing a key, influential part of Doom's rich history, and I think it's worth it. Final side note, if you actually code all my new grades and average them out, TNT's overall grade is a thumbs to the side. Make of that what you will. I'm out now. Peace.